So OpenAI have released a very fascinating webinar in which they talk about the future of O1 models. They show us a few graphs and gives us quite the insight into what is coming in the future. Now, this isn't the first time that OpenAI has done a webinar in which they showcase the potential for future models. But I think this one is rather fascinating as it allows us to look at where the new series of models is headed. As you may have recently realized, OpenAI have released the recent Model 01. And in doing so, they've created a separate model series in relation to the GPT series. So you can see right here on this graph, this is what I'm talking about. This is where we can see that not only do we have the GPT-4 series, in addition, we now have the O1 series as well as the GPT series. You can see right here that we have these two model series that are going to be continually released. And this basically ushers us into a new era of AI because this now means that unlike prior cycles where we would get just GPT 3.5, GPT 4, and although the, right now there are rumors of potentially GPT 4.5, this is just going to be in the GPT series. So it seems that we're going to be getting the O1 series and then of course the GPT series as two separate model classes one model class which can think and reason for very long periods of time whereas we're getting the other series of models which is going to be a more round general use model for everyday purpose and i think that makes a lot of sense considering the fact that these o1 series have tremendous use cases now in this private webinar they did talk about a bunch of use cases but i'll be covering that in another video because model capabilities are something that are really fascinating and the insights with as to what is going to be in the future is something i always like to look at at OpenAI, our product and research teams are deeply integrated, and this close partnership means that with every model release, we see new features and capabilities coming online in ChatGPT. You'll likely, or you're likely familiar already with our GPT series, the latest model in that series being GPT-40, and just last month, we released a new type of model series called OpenAI-01. We'll continue to release models in both model series because they help solve very different problems and use cases. And in practice, we see many customers use both models and that's how we use them internally for our own processes and use cases as well. So I think this is something that's rather fascinating because if we take a look at this old graph, you can remember that we were looking at model intelligence going up as well as the models called GPT Next and future models in future years. So I think this is something that we need to pay attention to because we now know that with model intelligence we're going to be getting two eras where we have the o1 series on this new graph and then of course the gpt series on this graph as well so both models over the coming years will be increasingly more intelligent and as she said we're going to be getting to see more capabilities come online and i think that statement was of course referring to the agentic capabilities of future models. Now, there is also another part where they did speak about what exactly is going to be next in these models. And I think one of the things that, that they spoke about was really fascinating. Let's touch on what's next. We are planning to make several updates to these models over the coming months. We plan to continue developing and releasing models in the new OpenAI 01 series, as well as our GPT series. In addition to model updates, we expect to add web browsing, file and image uploading, and other features to make them more useful uh, in use cases in ChatGPT. See there, he said he plans to add, well, not he, but of course, OpenAI plan to add multiple different features to these models in order to make them a lot more interesting and give them a lot more capabilities. Now, one of the things that I think many people do consistently forget, and that includes myself, is that the GPT-4.0 model is largely one of the most capable models that currently exists, but is only currently in certain modalities. If you remember how GPT-4.0 was initially trained was that it was trained as an omni model, meaning that you could, in theory, put any kind of input in and receive any kind of input out. Now, this is something that has slipped the minds of everyone because GPT-4.0 didn't ship with these capabilities initially, which meant that people didn't realize that you could use it for other things. Now, I'm guessing that 
the other features that are probably going to be added are the ones on this web page right here that I'm going to show you guys in a moment. So now if you come over to this web page, which is on the Hello GPT 4.0 web page, and you scroll down all the way until it says exploration of capabilities, you're going to see that there are a variety of areas where you can see the new capabilities that these models are going to be getting in the future. Now, of course, there's no promises, but this was something that we saw GPT-40 can do. Remember, this model was trained on a variety of different inputs and outputs that allows it to do anything. One of the exploration capabilities that I think is going to be most useful is, of course, the video summarization. You can see the user inputs a video of a presentation on techniques for maximizing LLM performance and says, can you give me a detailed summary of the presentation? Interestingly, this is a 45 minute video and you can see that the output manages to literally summarize this entire video. I can't imagine how useful this would be for the average person if this capability is there. Now, I don't think that the average person is going to use this necessarily on a day-to-day -day basis, but adding certain capabilities is going to open up a wide range of different use cases. Now, video isn't the only thing that GPT-40 might be getting in the near to short-term future. If we look at many of the other things we can see here, we've got also a 3D object synthesis. So we can say our input is a realistic looking 3D rendering of the OpenAI O logo shown below, and you can see that the output is there then you can see that the output is also there. And then of course we get a 3D reconstruction from six generated images. So it's pretty crazy that we do have a model that can generate images and then use those images to generate a complete 3D rendering in a video format. So I think these are the kinds of things that most people don't realize that the models can do and are going to do in the future. Now, why is this important? Well, a lot of people are banking on these models for future businesses, future ideas. And I think it's always important to understand the kinds of things that these models are going to be able to do in the future. So that if you're trying to plan for your business, for content creation, or just general daily use, you can understand where these models are going to excel. Another example slash modality that we do have there is of course audio. For those of you that work with audio frequently, it's quite likely that in the future, Google's Gemini isn't going to be the only model that allows you to input audio as an input. Currently, this model exists because it allows for hours and hours of footage, but it seems that in the future, OpenAI's GPT-40 Omni model is going to be the one that has these features. You can see that there is a minute audio input in, and then someone asks how many speakers are in this audio and what happened. And the output is that there are four speakers in the audio, and it describes it. And someone also asks GPT-40 to transcribe this. And you can see that the model manages to easily transcribe exactly what's going on. I think this kind of thing is going to be really useful in the future, considering the fact that many times you have many different file types, file sizes, and it just allows you to immediately work with GPT-40 slash the Omni model in a way that is much more seamless. Another one that I don't think most people will be using this, but I still think it's an exploration of capabilities is where you can get one single image and you can use that image as a story in multiple different character scenarios. You can see here we've got Sally the male woman and you can see that we can have this character in multiple different scenarios simply based on one picture and you can see that all you're doing is inputting these simple prompts and you're saying uh oh Sally tripped and the dog is chasing her and you can see we immediately get an image that looks like Sally's tripped then you can see we just update the story and it turns out it was a nice dog. And then we can see Sally is driving away. This is something that, you know, a lot of models do struggle with. Character consistency is something that many are looking for a solution in terms of which application they can use. And if OpenAI 01 can truly solve this problem, it's going to be a really good thing for a lot of individuals. Now, when we actually look back at this slide right here, we can see that one of the things they also talk about is access to tools. And one of the things he did also mention was, of course, web search. Now, that reminds me of OpenAI's recent tool, which unfortunately, I still don't have access yet. But that is, of course, the very infamous search GPT, which is basically quite similar to Perplexity's online tool, where using the power of large language models, you can use basically an advanced version of Google search that allows you to search the internet in a way that's much more effective. I wouldn't be surprised if search GPT is native integrated into chat GPT over the coming months, along with some small agentic tool use that makes it a lot more usable and autonomous.
And while even today you are able to switch between models in the same conversation, like you saw in the demo, we're working to enable ChatGPT to automatically choose the right model for your given prompt. So that is where it looks like we're going to be getting a dynamic model routing, which is basically where you have one entire system and you don't really switch between models, but you simply input your prompt as you would. And then the system chooses which model to route your query to. So for example, let's say I asked ChatGPT, what is three plus three? It's probably going to route it to GPT-40 mini, the smallest, lightweight, easiest model for simple queries. But let's say I say, how do I fix this 10 step problem in my business? It's going to go to OpenAI 01 and route the question there because it knows that it's going to need multi-step reasoning. And I think this is going to be something that allows, once again, for you to have a much more seamless experience. In terms of model updates, we've already started to test and run evals in OpenAI 01, which is the next iteration in this refollowing this research preview. Compared to 01 preview, users can expect more powerful reasoning model that is even better at coding and math, as you can see in these evals where 01 represents the orange bar. We look forward to making O1 available to customers as we build, as it will build on the use cases we saw today and likely unlock more use cases with its powerful reasoning capabilities. So it looks like when OpenAI manages to finalize their compute and they manage to actually ship out the final version of O1, we're going to be getting a truly intelligent and smarter model that's going to be even more capable than the O1 preview that we have now. So with that being said, let me know if you guys are excited for this. Are you guys excited for GPT-5? Although they didn't mention that in today's video, but I do think OpenAI has a lot to offer.